Hello everyone and welcome back to my video tutorials on WebGL. Today we're going to be exploring one of the ways that you can kind of play with fragment shaders. Now this video that I have playing right now, this is an old video that I did. It was a tutorial on how to you uh, write a C++ program that would generate uh, images of the Mandelbrot fractal. And if you haven't seen the Mandelbrot fractal before, it's pretty cool. I'm going to have another result of it coming up here. And in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how to make a fully featured viewer using WebGL. One of the big advantages of WebGL is you are running these programs on the GPU. So with graphics processing like this, if you watched this Mandelbrot video, you know, and if you didn't, you don't. Um, every single pixel in those Mandelbrot images that have been flashing up on the screen are things that were generated using their own little formula. So every pixel had its own little formula. Well, that sounds like the kind of thing that graphics programming does very well. Shaders are good at running programs concurrently and in fact they run it per pixel so uh, the Mandelbrot image generation is kind of a really good example of how to do that. So I'm going to close out of this and here's the demo application that I've made. Uh, you can see here is a little part where we're actually really really zoomed into the Mandelbrot. This is the lowest level floating point precision can offer. If I zoom out you can see here we have a much bigger Mandelbrot image. If we continue to zoom out you can see even that's just a part of this huge giant fractal that we're generating. And you can see every time I zoom the screen, the image is being completely recalculated. And you can see right up here, I'm getting about 60 frames per second in generating this gigantic image. Um, and my display too is fairly high resolution. So uh, this is just kind of to show off the power that um, fragment shaders have. So without any further ado, let's get in and actually start writing this. Oops, let me bring up a Sublime Text window. I like to use Sublime Text for all of my video editing, not or not video editing, for all of my programming and uh, WebGL stuff. Let's see, so this was the sample that I had. Uh, I'll just make a YouTube handle brought. And actually, hold up, you know what I really should do? I should put that in here. Um, let's see, I'll call this fragment frag shader Mandelbrot. Okay, go in here, index.html. Uh, one more really quick bookkeeping thing before we really get into it. I'm going to be hopefully improving on this right now. It just kind of zooms from the bottom right corner. I don't really like that. Um, but I am going to be implementing the same kind of features where it's completely full screen, no matter what you do. Uh, it takes up the entire window. Um, and there's going to be a lot of things before I'm done doing this. So I'm going to try to shoot for between 15 and 20 minutes per video. I'm expecting there to be three or four of these. Great. So without any further delay, let me zoom in a little bit so you can read it. I'll buy Sublime Text later, I promise. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an inline style just to get rid of all the margins and stuff. Margin. Uh, let's do this right. Oh, goodness. Okay. I want a margin of zero pixels. I want padding zero pixels as well. And I think I might need position absolute, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Let's get our doc type in there. Um, what else do we need in the head? Nothing because we're going to be setting the title in JavaScript. Alright, I'm going to call this init function as soon as the body is done loading. And I'm just going to want to include one file, and I'm just going to call that app.js app after the manner of all of my other uh, videos. Alright, let's see. Canvas ID is going to be GL surface. Um, and then what to show to the user if they don't have a HTML5 browser. That's less stupid browser. Alright, cool. So this should be our index page. I'm going to bring up PowerShell. I'm going to close down the old one that I have that's running this server. Good, we should get page not found. Let's go into the directory where that I have all this in. Go CS WebGL frag shader Mandelbrot. Okay, 
I'm going to start up the HTTP server. Again, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, I'm kind of breezing through things that I've covered before in other ones. Um, you can get this HTTP server by through NPM. Um, if you have Node.js, it's just npm install HTTP server, and that's it. Um, and when you run it, it just statically hosts all files from the current working directory on port 8080. And I think there's some customization you can give to it, but yeah, that should be good. Great. Cool. So now let's actually make the app.js. Um, and it needs function in it. And then one thing I do know is I'm going to be loading a couple of resources. Actually, let's just load them right here. Um, oh, how do I do it from a script tag again? Dot vs dot GLSL. I'm going to try something else. So, let's see. How do you do this again? GLSL to write WebGL shaders. If I if this doesn't give me exactly what I need, I'm just gonna do it the way that I've been doing it forever. Mm-hmm. Do 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 do. Where is it that I'm looking for? Yeah, so that's where I define the shader code. Where's the shader source call? Because that does look like it's doing what I'm doing. str. Where am I getting str from? Shader script dot first child no type equals three. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do this the way that I've been doing it before, um, and load it asynchronously. Okay, so in that case, I'm gonna write a function to do that. So load shader async. And this is going to take shader URL and callback. What I'm going to do in here is I'm going to make a request, XML HTTP request, rec.open. I want to use get for the shader URL. I think that last parameter is if I want to do it asynchronously. Rec.onload equals function rec.send. And in this case, I just want to call back rec.response text. And what was. Hmm, Response. Oh, status code, was it? Hmm. I'm just gonna. I don't remember exactly how all this works. So let's see. app.js true rec.send should be finished by now status okay so it was status if rec.status let's see is less than 200 or rec.status is greater than 300 let's do greater than or equal to then I want to call back could not load shader URL and otherwise I want to call back this and I'm just doing this to kind of follow the um, Okay, good. I'm just doing this to kind of follow the JavaScript-y kind of uh, paradigms where your first parameter to a callback function like this, an asynchronous callback function, should be an error. This actually isn't an error object, it's just a string, but it'll accomplish the same thing for my purposes. And then that should be null if there were no problems with all the other parameters being actually what you want. So, great. I'm not going to be using the async library because really I only need to get two shaders. Um, and so I can do something like this. Load shader async. You know what, though? Should I use async library? You know what? I am. I'm going to change my mind, go back on what I just said, and actually use async libraries because I kind of want to show you how to do things the proper way. So let's go back into this game programming, indigo cs, indigo cs, frag shader. I'm going to use a tool called Bower, which you can get, again, npm install Bower. I would use dash g Bower so that you have it completely globally. And the name of the library I'm going to use is async. If I let that run for a second, the async library should be there. While that's contemplating itself, I know where it's going to put the async library. So I'm going to Bower, oops, Bower components, async, I believe it's dist, async, 
min.js. I'm gonna have to check to make sure that's right. So let's see, cd, well it's bower components, async, dist, and async.min.js, yep. So if I load that, everything's hunky-dory. Great! So one of the methods in the async library is I have an async dot... Oh, let's see, because I'm only loading shaders right here, I don't really have to do the parallel. Usually what I do when I write a WebGL application is I have a parallel call where I have it load all the shaders together in one junk. I have it load all of the models and then all of the textures. But for this one, really, I just need um, to grab a couple of shaders. So via vertex shader text is going to be that URL. Is, did I already make these? I don't think I made these. Mandel vertex shader GLSL. Mandel fragment shader GLSL. Great. So this will be Mandel vertex shader GLSL, and FS text will come from Mandel FS GLSL. The function that I want to apply, the map function works kind of like mapping does in other languages, where it takes all of these members of this object that I'm passing in, and it takes the value, passes it through a function, and then spits out the transformed value. So the function that I want to send it through is going to be the load shader async function, which is written exactly how the map function is expecting um, one of these functions to be taken. It takes an input parameter and a callback. Great. And then when that's done, what I want to do is I want to run demo. And, okay, so let's see, load errors, and shader, loaded shaders. Uh, run demo. Great, so now if I do a console.log, load errors, and a console.log, loaded shaders, if I refresh the page, I should get perfect. There were no errors and our shader texts are like this. Cool, I don't want to save that. All right, so it looks like I have between five and 10 more minutes left. Let's start out just by getting the GL canvas ready. So we won't write any of our shaders yet in this video. We'll just get the open GL canvas ready. Great. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, I'm just looking through some of my notes. Okay. You know what? I have some old code written that I pulled from a Stack Overflow post that I'm going to pull up really quick, even though, strictly speaking, it's not part of this video. Was it include? No, that was something else. I don't think it was under app. I think it was somewhere else. Yeah, event handling. This is where it was. Okay. And all this code came from a Stack Overflow post. I have the link right here. I'll put this in the description. Um, it was hand how to handle the resize event, and someone wrote this little handy add event function that just adds an event listener to an object without pulling in any libraries like jQuery. I don't believe in pulling in jQuery for this simple of code, especially when the only thing we're using is the canvas element. So let me really quick implement those add event hmm. Oop, boop, boop. I want to do it this way and then similarly for the remove event great so what these are doing um, if you're not very familiar with JavaScript, I'm taking in an object. This is going to be something like our window or our canvas. I'm giving the name of the callback that I want to invoke. So, for example, mouse down, mouse wheel, mouse move, that kind of thing, mouse, mouse click. Um, and then a callback function that we want to invoke every time that is, uh, that is called. Um, I like to bring these together in pairs, even though for this tutorial we're only going to be using this add event because we want to have user interaction in the form of zooming in, zooming out, etc. Great. So, let's close that. Don't need that anymore. Attach callbacks. 
So I'm going to write a function called on resize window. And this is going to be all the code that's called when the window is resized. So console.log window was resized. And I'm going to attach the callback to that really quick by calling this add method. So, or add event. Add event, I want to add it to the window, resize, and on resize window. So if I do this and I reload it, you should see, whoops, not that. Whenever I resize, yes. So whenever I resize the window at all, it calls this window was resized callback. Cool. We'll be using that later in just a little bit. Uh, last thing I want to do in this video is I want to get OpenGL drawing just a plain black background that takes up the full screen. So let's get that. The first thing I'm going to need is... I'm going to need a reference to the canvas. So I'm going to put our global variables up here. Canvas and GL. Those are going to be our global variables. And I want to say canvas... Uh, also I'm going to use strict just so JavaScript actually complains about problems that we have. Canvas equals document dot get element by ID GL surface. And then our GL is going to be canvas dot get context web GL if available or if that's not available the experimental canvas. Experimental WebGL. If GL still isn't around, console.error cannot get WebGL context. Browser does not support WebGL. Uh, let's actually do an alert there. Then we'll return. We'll finish. Load this, we should have a GL, yep, and we have all of our GL functions, perfect. Uh, so I'm going to clear the canvas to a solid black color, so I'm going to set the clear color, what color the canvas will be cleared to when we clear the color buffer, to O, 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 alpha level of 1, and then GL.clear, GL.depth buffer bit, and the GL color buffer. Bit. I always find it funny, the bitwise or, this is how you do and when you're doing flags. Eh. Like I want the buffer bit, the depth and color buffer bits cleared. It's kind of funny. Let's see, and if we do that, yep, we now have this black thing. And as you can see, because we have our margin and padding set to zero, if we were to get rid of this, it would be kind of padded by default. Um, but we, because we have that set to zero, it stays in that corner. Now... I want to do the same thing that I'm going to be doing whenever I resize the window, and that is going to be making this canvas take up the entire screen. So I'm just going to call that onResizeWindow function right here. And inside this function, I want to set... You know what, really, I'm trying to decide if I want this function to go. I think I'm going to want this function to go inside of here so that we can capture all of these variables by closure. And you'll see why that's important in a little while. Um, actually, you know what? No. No. Not for this demo. Cool. So, when the window is resized, I want to get our canvas. If we don't have our canvas defined yet, then don't do anything, because we're going to be doing everything on the canvas. I want the canvas width to be... I think it's under document inner width. Or maybe it's window inner width. Yeah, it's window inner width. So canvas width equals document inner width canvas height equals document inner height and then GL viewport we need to adjust as well to take up the entire screen. Cool, so let's just make sure that this works. Oh, window inner height, not document. Alright. Oh, I think this might need to be, uh, this clearing needs to go inside of our render loop. So, var loop equals function 
So this is what's going to happen every time we're in the render loop. Request animation frame loop. Request animation frame loop. Cool. So what we have so far now is we just have a full screen GL context. You can see there's no scroll bars in the side or in the bottom here, which means that this is taking up exactly the viewing area and no more. If we were to go into a full screen app, it would maintain the full screen quality and everything would be a-okay. So for right now, that's where I'm going to stop. I don't want these videos to go too long, but in the next video we will be uh, starting to write the shaders that we're going to be needing. And we're not going to finish them up in the next video, I imagine, but we'll, we'll get the shaders written. So it's looking like this is going to be a three-video series. So catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching this one.